Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I wanted to go over something that I haven't really seen done before in really in Pro Tools or any other DAW, and that is scoring with with real instruments. So I've seen a ton of videos about MIDI scoring and um, VST orchestra plugins and all these huge epic, you know, strings and brass and percussion and libraries from Spitfire and just all over, like, there's a ton of music out there that is done in that style, the, like, kind of fake orchestra style, but the way I approach composing is a little different. I like getting my hands on real instruments and playing them and leaving things maybe a little imperfect. To me, that adds a lot of of texture to a score that you can't get with these really clean sample libraries, and I'm not trying to knock that style of composition. There's uh, tons of TV shows that use sample libraries and everything, but my purpose when I do a score is trying to do something that is unique. And most of my work is done in audio post-production, so when I do get a chance to score something, I really try to make sure it's a little bit outside the box and uses some real instruments. So we're going to be doing this in Pro Tools. We're going to be using a Korg Minilog. I've got a Roland TR6S, which is a little drum machine. I've got an Arturia Micro Brute. I've got some drums over here. Uh, electric guitar, bass guitar. I've got some acoustic guitars, percussion. I'm not really sure what all I'm going to use. We're just going to start from scratch and see what we get. So I'm going to put on my headphones. That way the mic doesn't pick up bleed from my monitors and we'll just get to it. So in Pro Tools here, I've already named this project the name of the queue. I've got the name of the film and then 1M23 paying respects. So the 1M23, this project is all in one video file, so they're all gonna start with one, but if you had a film that was say cut into six reels, then like if you have a queue in reel five, it would be 5M and then the number of the queue there. That just helps you organize, uh, especially when you're talking with people, you know, going over notes and stuff. It's nice to have numbers. And then I'll also put the name of the queue, kind of my composer name for it of what the scene is or you know the vibe of of the cue or whatever it's just a descriptor so that it's not just a number i've already got some basic tracks set up here um, they're not super organized they're not color coded yet but when you're composing stuff you know it's going to be based on your own instruments whether they're vsts or real instruments so this is going to be very specific to what you play what you have available to you and what instruments i have templates for different types of scores that I do, um, but it's so dependent on what you have on your system, I'm not going to go through that because you really should be making your own. Uh, but I've got some just basic tracks I can record with a few plugins on there, uh, some drums, drums, you know, take up a decent amount of mics. I've got six mics on my kit, but those are in a folder, and acoustic guitar, electric guitar, bass guitar, which I'll be recording DI, uh, and then a couple synths. But I don't have any video right now. On my main counter here, this is set to time code. I'll switch this back to bars and beats once I start working. But for now, I need to get the video track into Pro Tools. So Shift, Option, Command, I. When you start composing on a film, you'll want to ask for a video file. But you'll also ideally want to ask for three different stems from the editor. One dialog, which will give you all the production sounds and if they have any ADR voiceover. The second one would be the temp score they have. So all the cues that they've plugged in to show you intent and kind of what the director is going after and mood and all that on a separate stem. And then if they have any sound effects in the cut already, you want that on a third stem. That way you can listen to the music stem, but then also mute it so that you can you know, make your own ideas about how you want the scene to play out and instruments you want to use. We're going to add the dialogue and sound effects stem. We're just going to use stereo for this from the session start. All right, just to double check, dialogue looks lined up. Let me make sure I label this dialogue guide, sound effects guide. I'm going to get rid of the one with the music. Let's look at the scene coming out of this. <coughs>
Where are you going? I'm here, aren't I? The fuck I come to pay respects, everyone leaves? I've been mourning two motherfuckers. I gotta go to work. I hope you're in a better place than here. So now that we've watched the scene and soaked it in, there's a ton of space for music, so we'll have to figure out a plan of attack. First thing I'm going to do is look for some sync points. These are moments where either the story shifts, or there's a significant cut, or some kind of character action that motivates, you know, starting the queue, changing the queue, and having any pivot points on my timeline before I even lay down a single note. And syncing up with either certain cuts or actions or like, you know, character moments can really elevate a scene. The first spot we have is this cut from the previous scene in their apartment to the cemetery. So what I'm going to do is zoom in here and just go frame by frame and find right there. That's the frame where the cut happens. And I'll just drop a marker and call it cut. Now this is where the scene starts, but I think it's actually going to be better to start the queue back here. So we'll figure out where to start the queue exactly later. There's a, a shift point that I need to keep in mind here where Alec lands in the scene with his brother. And what's interesting about that is Alec might be expecting them to, you know, pat him on the shoulder or give him a hug. This isn't going to be a super hard sync point, but I'm just going to mark this as a shift. And then they walk out. He's still focused on them. The fuck I come to pay respects, everyone leaves. I've been mourning two motherfuckers. So that moment up to here, where he says, I'm in mourning too, is between him, his girlfriend, and his brother. So all that's kind of one beat. This section can probably stand on its own without too much. And then right around here, he shifts back. I've been mourning two motherfuckers. To focus on his mom. If you wanted a hard sync point, you could probably, uh, you know, have it be the cut. But if you watch, I'll make this video a little bigger so you can see. If you watch closely, his eyes turn down to the headstone right there. So that's the point I'm going to use. We're going to call this shift two. And now the scene becomes more about his mother. It's not a very happy place. They've had a lot of issues with, you know, family stuff and crime and drugs. So he's thinking maybe mom's took the right path here and conked out. And then he walks away. So... I think what we'll want to do is maybe lay out here. And by a layout, what I mean is the music that's going on, uh, it can thin out a little bit and maybe just come down to a, one instrument or one note. And then we cut to the wide shot for his walkout. We'll probably want some kind of resolution around here. Let's just see. Maybe after that last bell, that would be a good spot. So this one is kind of nebulous too. It's not a super hard. So I'm just going to say soft sync last note. Okay, so 
I've got my markers laid out, but this is a pretty mellow cue and it's not going to take a ton of uh, sync points to really get stuff to land. I think the only real big, big one is probably this one here that lands on the cut. This one's got a couple frames wiggle room. So sometimes I'll go back and rename these hard sync. Then I know like that it has to land on that frame. You'll notice I'm setting my markers to be absolute, meaning even with tempo changes and bars and beats changes and all that, it's not going to shift uh, with that. It's going to stay locked to the time code on my timeline. And when you're scoring something, you have you have the time code that you have to work with, and then you have your bars and beats that are dictated by your tempo and meter and all that. Um, I think, yeah, everything else is pretty, pretty fuzzy as far as sync. So what I'll do is I'm going to go here and figure out exactly where I want. Maybe I'll start the cue on that door slam. That's great. Uh, so I'm going to tab to transient, which is just tab on my keyboard, and I'm going to make an absolute, and we're going to call this Q start. Now what I need to do, this is all time code based so far. So I'm going to go up here to event, time operations, and move song start to this time code right here. It's in the middle of the frame, but it'll get it close enough. And you want to renumber the song start to one. Uh, and what this will do, if I hit apply, is you see how this tempo marker moved there. But if I go to bars and beats now, I got, I have measure one starting right here. I don't have a tempo yet. So I need to open up my tempo map and I'll make this a little bigger. This is where, like I said, Pro Tools isn't as, as nice. I remember when I started in Digital Performer, I could set it to automatically map the tempo to the markers. But at this point, what I want to do is figure out what's the tempo of the cue. Some of them don't have a tempo. It's free time and you can just play uh, without worrying about, you know, being so on a grid. But sometimes it's nice to have a little pulse because this is kind of a funerally type scene. It's probably going to be a slower tempo around 60 beats per minute or so. When I was in jazz, I had this great teacher, Neil Grandstaff, who, who would take us out to listen to the birds and the rhythm of the birds. And he used to talk about synchronicity. And scenes tend to have a tempo where you start to feel like, okay, this is about the tempo of like the cuts. It's not really something you can work out mathematically. It's just something you kind of have to feel out. I've got a click track in here. Let's see where the click is. I'm going to try setting this to about 60, which is like a resting heart rate. And no, it's a lot slower than that. Let's do eighth notes at probably like a hundred. Let's just play it from the top and see if that tempo feels right. That's kind of nice. That actually lines up. We could do six here. We're going to go to event, time operations, and change meter. We're going to change the meter just for the selection here. And we're going to have this be six, four. And that gives us, it's not right on the cut, but it's pretty close. Let me see what happens if I just move this down a little bit. Perfect. Okay. Now it'll be right on that. And I'm okay with this being six because it's probably going to be a pad. It's not going to be anything that's rhythm. So I don't have to worry about, you know, oh no, it's six and then it goes to four. Although that can be cool too. And then we've got a hard sync shift here. So these are all behind the beat. You can see they're one beat behind. So what I can do to fix that, um, you know, these aren't hard sync here. These are all not hard sync, but you can see they're they're like a quarter note behind where they need to be to land on the beat. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to just slow the tempo down slightly into this shift. If you're musically trained, this would be called a retardando. Um, and I've got it before the cut because 
Maybe I wanna have a note hold here. If this tempo change isn't getting me exactly where I need to go, I can highlight it and nudge it around until that marker lines up dead on that bar and beat marker. And the rest of this stuff is probably fine. I might want here, these are still, these ones are still a little bit behind the beat, but I'm okay with that since they're not hard sync. This one, I think I'm going to want to slow it down, even though it's not going to maybe line up with where I have this marker, just to give it that like final, you know, we're done with the cue feel. This part here, you could, you could do all this without any uh, click track, you could do it without any markers, you could just do it by just grabbing an instrument and start playing watching the screen. That can work great, but because I'm going to be doing multiple instruments on this, I, I need to have a click to at least give me some frame of reference for timing. Not to say you couldn't do it without it, uh, it'd be probably pretty cool and experimental to do it without it, but I want this to be a little bit, you know, a little bit tighter than that. So now that I've got my markers laid out, I can make this a little bit smaller. I still want to be able to see where it's changing tempos. Um, but I can really start to focus on what kind of sounds I want to use and how I want this mapped out. I'm going to want to start this out with something very subtle, probably a little pad that doesn't move around too much. And then on this cut, I can introduce kind of the theme or idea that I want, which will probably be on guitar because that's my main instrument. And then this shift, I'm going to want to modulate or change, you know, the tone center of where I'm at. Uh, as it becomes more about them leaving. And then I'm going to want to shift a second time here, probably come back to the initial theme, uh, because initially he's coming to pay respects to his mom, and that's what he ends up doing. Probably thin that out a bit, and then just have a final chord at the end. Just to map it out visually, I'm going to do uh, a map track. And let's make this, haven't done a good job of color coding stuff. These are just notes for me. So I'm gonna say intro, pad, single note. And then around here, we're gonna do introduce theme on guitar. And then probably modulate. We'll modulate and go to a B theme. If you've been doing themes for the whole film, it's a great time to, you know, if the characters have themes, then you can repurpose them and kind of switch them out. And then here, oh, I talked about coming back to Mama. So we'll say this is back to theme A. Let me just rename this one. I might trade instruments here. Let's do ba more bass guitar here. And then... This will all be one thing. Theme A reduced. Okay. So the pad leading up to the main theme can be dictated by whatever the main theme is. Um, and because it's a funerally dirge type thing, it doesn't have to be too complicated. It doesn't have to be too melodious. Uh, you know, it can be pretty, pretty minimalist. And that's kind of my, my style anyways. Got an electric guitar track. This is just an SM57 on a Fender Blues Deluxe. And I've got a Telecaster, which is great for this kind of stuff. Uh, bright pickups help it cut through even when you're just finger picking. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is I've got my click track. And I'm going to kind of have an idea of what I want to do. And I'm just going to watch the video and play it.
Where you going? I'm here, aren't I? The fuck I come to pay respects, everyone leaves? I've been mourning two motherfuckers. I gotta go to work. I hope you're in a better place than here. So it wasn't perfect, but you know, I got the, the point across and I'm gonna be adding some more layers to this. I can always go back in and punch this in, but playing the whole way through on one instrument kind of helps get like the overall mapping of the track. So whatever your main instrument is, if it's guitar, piano, percussion, voice, maybe you're a singer, just try to play through it once and you can always take it out and, and do it again later. Maybe, you know, remove some parts or change things up, but at least gives you kind of like a thread running through, almost like a scratch track if you were recording a band. I've got this mini log tweaked the way I want it. I'm going to be changing the filter as I bring it in and maybe just playing some notes underneath. Here, aren't I? The fuck I come to pay respects, everyone leaves. I've been mourning two motherfuckers. So I think I'm actually gonna take it out there. I'm just gonna cut that, let that part play. Um, probably want to bring it back, maybe just into the last note. I let it trail a little bit into that scene, uh, just because it can be nice to kind of tie those things together. So we'll call that good. I'd like to now use this micro brew. I've got an arpeggio that I played in, just really simple, uh, kind of the common notes of the chords. It's a C major seven to uh, like an E minor. You could, you could probably say it's an E minor seven if you wanted. So E, G, and B are in both of those chords if you're going with the C major seven. So that this B adds a little bit of tension here, and I just played a little pattern in. Uh, if you, you know, not everybody's going to have the same synth. You might have something different. You might be using a soft synth. So I'm not going to go into how this works, but very basic synthesis. Uh, ADSR. You've got different um, modulation. You can. It's got a little mod matrix here that you can use, and I really like to modulate the cutoff. You saw me do that on the mini log, and I'll do that here. But I'm going to, this is synced to Pro Tools. Hopefully it works. The, the MIDI sync with Pro Tools is not, um, it's not perfect. And there can be some gremlins, but 
I'm going to see if I can get this arpeggio. I'll probably bring it in, um, I don't know, wherever it feels right, and then kind of fade it out. I can fade it manually with this volume control here, but you can see just uh, I've got a ping pong delay with waves H delay, and I've got some reverb. And both delay and reverb, the delay is kind of adding some stereo rhythm to it, and then the... Um, Reverb just helps push it back a little bit into the space. So I've got the arpeggio set to off now, and I'm just going to do this live. So I'm going to hit play, make sure I bring the filter all the way down to nothing. I can actually probably start recording here. So I'm just going to play that motif in by hand. Hey, respect everyone leaves. I've been mourning two motherfuckers. I got to go to work. I hope you're in a better place than here. That was a little janky, but it was kind of cool. Wasn't sure if I'd get here in time. I come to pay respects, everyone leaves. I've been mourning two motherfuckers. I gotta go to work. I hope you're in a better place than here. Close enough. I think what is missing is on this B section where it shifts, I need to add uh, a bass guitar and that'll help highlight the change because if you during a shift if you have a new instrument come in or one 
stop playing and sit out, it, it's easier to hear versus just a tonal shift. If it's a textural shift too. So I think that's what I'll do. And I'm going to record it with a DI. Bass guitars, you can record it through an amp, um, but a lot of rooms, even medium-sized rooms, have issues with low, you know, low frequency buildup, so they can be a little tricky to record if you have a nice bass amp. I'm just going to do DI, so let me set that up. Here, aren't I? The fuck I come to pay respects, everyone leaves. I've been mourning two motherfuckers. world's best musician not even top five billion probably so I make tons of mistakes when I record but I just pick up what I need punch it in and it's usually fine you're gonna see a beat up old Yamaha acoustic guitar it's tuned slack key I did a couple chords and some harmonics to finish this out Okay, this is a mess. Everything's the same color. I don't really have any mixing done to it. So I've also got tracks I didn't use. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. No drum machine. Thank you very much. Uh, let's say acoustic guitar. Make that orange. Electric guitar. We'll make that baby blue. Bass guitar. Brown for the brown notes. Brute. It's got a nasty sound. I'll do orange log. Nice green. Drums are good. This video is already going to be super long, and I don't want it to get too far into mixing music and compression and EQ and basic, you know, audio engineering stuff. So I'm just going to show you how I clean my session up, how I mixed it, and how I'm going to get it ready for the dub or the film mix if I were to send this to the re recording mixer or if. Heaven forbid I'm mixing this and scoring it, then, you know, getting the stems to my mix session so I can adjust things with the dialogue and music and all the other things. So there's not really anything super drastic. Electric guitar, I've got a, a cut, and I'm taking out a little bit of the bass. Uh, the Micro Brute, pretty honky around 700, so I took some of that out. There's also delay and reverb on that. Uh... And let's see, this is the mini log, which is just a pad. So I've really rolled off pretty aggressively the lows and the highs. There's not really much outside there. So it's it's just to keep that from, you know, doing anything with the reverb that I don't want. Uh, the bass guitar, I've got a little bit more compression on just to smooth out some of the attacks. One thing that's nice with bass guitar, if you DI it, is you have more control over the amount of compression that goes into it. So I do have it running through an amp sim uh, in Guitar Rig, which adds some compression. And it's got a fast comp on there. It's not really doing anything because the, the threshold is so high on that. But the fab filter compressors are great. And um, I've got that just kicking down a little bit of the attack and smoothing out the, the release time on it. So it's fat, sustains through those long notes. Drums, I've got, this is a pretty dead room that I record in, so I've got a live, pretty long, two-second uh, decay time on this reverb, and that's kind of based on each cue. The faster you play, the shorter your decay times should probably be on most of your time-based processing, whether it's delay or reverb, and even your, uh, even your release time on your compressors need to be shorter so that it's not so that the, the next transient isn't already kicked down. 
this is a really sparse cue and I can get by with a lot more reverb than I would normally use and longer decay times. And then Saturn, man. Saturn is so great for drums. I've been using Saturn on all kinds of stuff lately. And this is just a saturation. You can add different bands to it. I've used this on so many different things. It's kind of like a little Swiss Army knife. Quick mix. Uh, what I'll do next is highlight the range. Make sure I've got enough heads and tails. I'm going to switch back to timecode for this export here. And... I'm going to copy this. So see the time code there. Next, what I'm going to do is highlight these one, two, three, four, five, six tracks. And I'm going to bounce them. We're going to call it that. And I'm going to put the time code at the end, which you can't have colons. Thanks, Pro Tools. And yeah, 2448, render all the automation. Let's go ahead and bring this in after I bounce this. And here's our stems. We've got acoustic guitar, drums, electric guitar, brute, log, and then bass guitar. So it's all laid out. Uh, it's in Finder in my bounce files. If I then wanted to do a stereo mix i could do it one of two ways i could highlight these make sure they're set to an output that i want and then solo them and then do alt command b and we'll just call this paying respects stereo mix and it should be in bounced files And we'll bring this in right here. Bam, there's your stereo mix. I don't even think I had a limiter on this. Uh, it's such a soft cue, it probably doesn't need it. So there you go. You've got your exports that you can send out to the mixer or to the picture editor or director or whatever you want. You could even export a QuickTime video for them to watch. And since you've got the dialogue and sound effects stem, it'd be super easy to do that. So just do that times however many cues there are in the film. Once you get to higher track counts, which, you know, like 20, 30 tracks, you're going to want to bounce not the individual tracks, but probably the buses. So you do guitars, strings, uh, drums, percussion, effects, hits, uh, lead synthesizer, ARP synthesizer, all that. You can get crazy with how many stems you export. But this is a really simple cue, so I didn't have to worry about that, and I just did the individual tracks. So this cue is ready to go. Thank you guys for coming along with me on this ride of recording real instruments and Pro Tools to score this scene. I think uh, MIDI is awesome for a lot of things and, uh, and it works for a lot of different projects, but Pro Tools is first and foremost an audio workstation. It's not really a MIDI workstation. So if you've got Pro Tools and you need to score something and you've got different instruments, it can be a great option for you to, to kind of give yourself a little bit of a different flavor than just the orchestral mock-ups. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Here, aren't I? The fuck I come to pay respects, everyone leaves? I've been mourning two motherfuckers.
I gotta go to work. I hope you're in a better place than here.